Hello everyone, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today, I'm going to teach you how to control filtering enabled in Roblox Studio. So, this is going to stop hackers from exploiting in your game, and it's also going to show you how you can make secure scripts without them easily being able to glitch out and have easy ways to mess with them and exploit. Um, mainly to stop hackers in your game, but um, there's other reasons too but mainly hackers okay anyways there is plenty of ways to explain this filtering enabled is what roblox added to stop hackers from changing things on their computer and replicating them to the client so basically what it means is let's say this part right here this is the computer or this is the server actually and here is the client so this is one of the clients one of the players and we'll say there's tons of these players connected to the server and what all these do is they connect to this server okay and when they connect um, now what hackers want to do is they want to be able to um, take their information on the client and put it into the server but we can easily secure things and there's definitely a lot of methods that you can do to make it so they can't do that and it's called a backdoor whenever they're able to like put viruses in your game that allow them to control your game basically and be OP and there's really nothing you can do to stop this once they have it uh, except for you know delete the virus and the damage will already be done and you could even get banned for having this in your game uh, even though it's not even your fault um, but basically here's what filtering enabled does so anything on the server can't be accessed by the client and anything on the client can't be accessed to the server so they're basically their own things but then so if we remove this this is the client this is the server anything on the server that's in like workspace or replicated storage and all the basic ones except for ser anything that has server in it cannot be accessed by a client so like server script service server storage all that that can be accessed from the client so if you want to have secret stuff in there that's where you want to put it um, but basically this is the server, this is the client. They, uh, whatever is on the client, or whatever on the server, like in workspace, will get replicated to the client. Uh, and actually, not just one client, all the clients. So every single client gets replicated and gets all the info. But if you want to send stuff to the server on the, from the client, you have to use remote events. So you can't send stuff to the server, you can only send stuff to the client. So. Uh, how we do this is with remote events, and I've already talked about them. And what you do is you send data to the server. So I'm going to also use some remote events. So uh, this model is kind of dumb, but it'll get easier. So I'm going to show you a way that hackers can hack your game, one of the ways. And this is honestly really simple, and a lot of people do this in their games. You never want to fire. Um, okay, so hold on. I want to make sure you guys understand this. So here's a remote event. Here's the script, and here is the local script. Okay. And in this script, we're gonna do local remote. So we're gonna set the remote event, and we're gonna do uh, game dot players dot player alley connect function instance dot new. A folder player. Oops. So what I'm going to do is just create a basic leader stats thing. So local leader stats equals that. Leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Local money equals instance dot new. Int value player money dot name equals money. And actually, I'm going to put this into leader stats. Okay, and then we're gonna do remote dot onserve event connect function player, and then money, 
okay now this is what you never ever ever want to do so you never want to fire money from the server <laughs> or from the client uh, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. We're going to do game to good storage or mode event fire server. And I'm just going to do uh, 100. So, what you could do here is a lot of people think, okay, well, we want them to buy something. And it's going to be neg it's gonna be $100, so we make that negative, okay? And <laughs> what we do is we just do player dot leader stats dot money dot value minus equals money right and actually we make this hundred because we're subtracting it so what this is gonna do is if we check leader stats so it says it took a hundred dollars away from us right what you could do if you're an exploiter is just go game to upgrade storage or mode event fire server and since it's subtracting the money if you know basic integers um, a negative plus a negative or a negative plus another negative equals a positive so if we put negative values and we put like negative a million as you can see we just have infinite money now and if we go on the server and check this out yeah we actually do have the money so there's nothing you can really do at this point except reset the money so you never want to fire important values from the client you only want to keep them on the server with tables such as local shop prices equals this and then what you could do is fire the item instead and then do um, player dot money dot value minus equals shop prices item okay and then the shop prices we could put um, car or something or whatever you want to buy equals to or actually it's just gonna be car equals to 100 right so that way they can't change the prices and they can't give themselves infinite money but what they can do is just you know find the uh, item so just do car and we'll see that as you can see it took away our money because it's the price right here so they can't alter the prices now they can only choose which one they want to buy so that makes it where they can't change anything and it's safe and it's secure and exploiters cannot alter it whatsoever the only thing they can alter is which one they want to buy. And that's what the regular player does anyway. So, you know. Um, there's other ways to make filtering enabled possible. Like, uh, one thing that exploiters hate is when you use remote functions. Because what you do with remote functions is you're not firing, you're not sending, you're not really sending data to the server. You're more of retrieving it. So they can't alter them anyway at all. Um, I mean, they can send data to the server and then retrieve whatever gets sent back, but they can't access all the information, so they're kind of screwed. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about that, but also another one that you can do is server-side inputs, so such as click detectors and um, part.touched, part or characters and range of whatever and anything that has to do with the server and the client can't see it whatsoever so if you had a script and you put it in a part okay and here's the part so make this part whenever it's touched print something so do script.parent.touched connect function hit and we'll do if game.players get player from character oops get player from character hit up parent so if it's a player which we're the only player so uh, we're gonna do print game dot or actually we'll just do hit up parent dot name okay so that's gonna print out our name whenever we touch it but here's the thing on the client uh, you actually would not be able to see this if you're an exploiter 
explorers w cannot see this and they won't be able to know what it does they can't alter it in any way and they can't do anything with it so if you touch it it just says our name but you can do anything you want with this and you can even add debounces and stuff to make sure that explorers really can't do anything with it um, there's also things that you could do to block exploiters and ban them from your game if they did something bad so like let's say okay what you could do <laughs> just saying is to catch exploiters in the act you actually get the price right here and we can delete uh, actually we'll have shop prices we'll have item and then the price and then minus equals shop prices item and what we'll do is if price is not equal to shop prices item then player kick exploiter so basically you catch them in the act so you're firing the price to the server but you don't even use it you're only using item so it makes them think that they can get away with it and then you just ban them <laughs> so it's pretty cool uh, and then we just fire the remote with the item and then the price so we'll do like negative whatever and it says exploiter <laughs> which is good but if we put it at you know 500 or I think it was 300 no it is 500 okay um, if it's 500 you don't get kicked because you're not an exploiter so you could do that in some games and it's actually a really good way of catching exploiters in the act and then you just ban them permanently they can never go back on there and that will if you have a really popular game that can really really ban the exploiters that know what they're doing um, there's also okay I'm gonna show you an example of this so you can't damage or change any variables of another player on your client so if we just go find a zombie right spawn this guy in here and I'm just gonna anchor him so he can't move um what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kill the zombie on the client so an exploiter would think they're funny or they think they're smart or something like that and they would go to the zombie and they would change the health to zero and they'd be like, oh, I killed him. And if you go to the server, the zombie's perfectly fine, right? However, if you wanted to kill your your own character uh, on your client, you can do that. So if you just put health zero, go on the server, you'd you'd be dead because you can change you can change things about your own character, but not like not too much. Like you can only change your humanoid, and that's it. And but you can't change some stuff like rig type and all that because if you change on the client, right? It's not even gonna spawn you in, I don't think. And we go back to R15, and then it spawns you in. But you can't do that on the server, I'm pretty sure. And then we just reset or whatever. Or actually, um, yeah, it still doesn't work. There's ways to do that, but um. Yeah, so that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something. Um, just so you know, they're pretty much exploiters don't have power on the server. That's all I'm trying to say. So if you're going to create anti-cheat also, like uh, anti-exploit stuff, you have to put it on the client, which is really bad because they can just go in and delete the script. And if they do that, then, you know, your anti-cheat's gone. But... You could do stuff like uh, invoking the client and getting all the children of whatever. There's sneaky ways around it so exploiters can't do it, but no matter what, they can always just delete the anti-cheat, which is pretty bad. But um, there are a bunch of server-side anti-exploits that you can do, like the one I showed you earlier. But anyways, yep, that's all for this video. If you have questions, join my Discord server. I have a Roblox group, which I don't think a lot of you guys know, but I create games on there. And I'm not going to link any scripts or anything because, you know, this is just um, how-to, basic info stuff. But 
Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.